We're going to explore the theme object eventually in more detail. But for now, what I'd like to show you is how we can move on from inline styling to the more advanced with style HOC. And in fact, to do that, let's actually start by fixing some of the issues that one of you promptly pointed out. So we actually have problems with responsiveness in the application. I'm going to close up all of the other tabs as well. So I'm going to open up the console and I'm going to open up the emulator. So as you can see here, it doesn't really look very nice on mobile devices. And in order to fix that, we can go back to our index.js for the exercise component. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change some of the grid items here. First of all, on small devices, we want to make sure that we have 12 columns. And then on small devices, as well as medium, large, and extra large, we're actually going to have six columns only. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into the other grid item as well. And let's save that and let's see if that changes anything. It looks much better right now. And let's actually switch to a different tab. And that's what it's going to look like. And now we don't have that ugly uh, misplacement issue, but we still have an issue with the tabs. So there's a few things we can do here. Let's go to the footer component and we have a centered property. In fact, what I'm going to do is let's go to material UI next. We're going to go to the documentation. Let's explore some of the features that the tabs provide. So I'm going to go to tabs. And if you scroll down, you're actually going to find a section for scrollable tabs. So what's happening here is we have a scrollable property on the tabs. If I copy that property and I'm just going to paste it in over here, I'm going to save it. Let's go back to the mobile device. As you can see here, it looks a little bit better because we now can actually scroll the elements over there and we can actually see all of them. But we do get a warning though, because it says that we cannot use a centered property set to true together with the scrollable property also set to true. And that's actually one of the limitations um, of the tabs component, and it's a known limitation. Now there is a few things that we could do. So in order to alleviate that problem, let's actually import with with helper method from material uh, material, let's say UI slash utils slash with width. What that helper method is gonna do is it's actually gonna allow us to have a width property injected into the component, but the only thing we need to do, of course, is we need to wrap it with that method, okay? And then we also need to pass it down. So I'm gonna wrap all of that with parentheses. So it's just gonna be used in the same fashion as a higher order component, just like with styles. It's basically the same thing. So I'm gonna save the file. Let's actually console log the property. So let's do console log width. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Let's go to the console and I'm actually going to open it up over here. And as you can see here, we have a, an XS value, which refers to the extra small device or basically the mobile device. That's what it means. So remove the console log and for the center property, I'll have a condition. So I'm going to say if the width is extra small, in fact, we're actually going to say if it's not extra small, then the value would be true. And then in that case, we actually want to make them centered. But for scrollable properties, well, I only want to make them scrollable on mobile devices because the width is too small. And so you, they can't see, the user can't see all of the tabs. So this one I'll change to three equal signs. And of course you could keep them as two. Um, in this case, it's not going to affect anything, but the idea, like I said, we want to keep them centered on medium, basically on small, medium, large, and extra large devices, but we also want to make them scrollable on extra small devices only. So I'll save that and let's go over here, refresh the page. And as you can see, once it loads, let's actually scroll down. We could basically uh, move between the tabs and we can see all of them at once. And the other thing you could also do is you could also add scroll buttons. The way you would do that is you set the scroll buttons property to on. By default, it's auto. And in that case, you're going to see these scroll buttons. And if you'd like to experiment, of course, go ahead and see um, if the styling fits your needs and if you do like the way it looks. Okay, so I'm going to move on to something else. In this case, we still have an issue with the form. As you can see, we have a fixed width, which doesn't really work on mobile devices. So there's a few things we can do. First of all, let's remove the 
console log statement. The simplest fix we could do is we can reset the width to something different, let's say 250 pixels. And if we save that, it's already gonna fix the form for us, okay? Let's see how it looks like on iPad, for example. If we look at the form, it's kind of small and it's actually pretty small on mobile, um, on desktop devices as well. So we could technically have two separate classes. So we might have an extra small form control, right? And we can have the width set to 250. And for example, by default, we might have 300 or we might actually have more than that. So it depends. We might have different classes for different, um, different width, basically. So it's something that you could do. It's pretty much the same approach as we used in the footer. We had to use the width, width, higher order component. So if you want to go with that approach, you're more than welcome to do so. For now, I guess I'm just going to keep it as 250 because I think it's just fine for now. But if you like to customize it more for your needs, go ahead. And the other cool thing we could do is we could also go back to our app component. There's actually an interesting um, baseline component that Machil UI provides. And if you go to layout, um, actually it's in style CSS baseline. What this one does, it basically applies a consistent layout to all of your pages. Because you might know that in your applications, and actually if you look at this one, you can already see a, a weird margin appearing around your elements. In fact, I think it's set on the body. There we go. The body has a margin of 8 by default. And different browsers will apply different default styles to your elements, depending on what specific browser it is. So in order to alleviate those inconsistencies between the browsers, Material UI provides a functionality or utility component known as CSS Baseline. It allows you to basically start your application with a clean slave, and it's going to look pretty much consistent on all of the browsers. So it's something that I like to use as well. So I'm going to import it as well at the top of the app component. Um, let's import it right after React. Let's have our CSS Baseline. And I'm going to put it in here right after the fragments. So let's have our CSS baseline. And as you can see here, it fixes the margin. The other thing we could do is we could go back to our index.js file. At this point, we could safely remove the margin bottom. Let's remove the margin button for now. And that's going to remove that margin between the footer and between the two panes. We could do the same thing for margin top, though I like to keep it as five pixels for now. I'd like to have a small space in between so we can see the shadow. So I'm gonna keep it like that and I think it looks pretty good. All right, so in closing, we kind of touched on styling in this video. What I'd like to point out is that for simple components, for simple styling, it's perfectly fine to use inline styles. And in fact, inline styles are available in React out of the box, like I said, so you don't need to rely on any other helpers or any other hardware components, anything like that. You could basically use these styles out of the box without actually any other dependencies. So these styles, the inline styles, are basically objects that contain key value pairs in which you basically define your CSS, right? And this gets converted to inline styles on the actual elements. So in fact, I'm gonna show you. Over here in our application, if I find the left pane, let's say, you could see that the left pane has inline styles. These are the inline styles I was talking about. So it actually injects that JavaScript object from here, so the paper element. It injects those styles into the actual DOM element. So let's see how this is gonna look like with the with styles helper. So what I'll do is I'm gonna import with styles from material UI slash styles, okay? And we're gonna convert the styles to a function that accepts a theme object and returns another object as well, which would basically contain the paper element. And we fix that import typo. And what we need to do in the end is we need to have a with styles call. We have to pass the styles object in it. And then also we have to wrap this with the brackets as well. So I'm gonna fix the indentation really quickly and then finally we're missing a closing parenthesis at the end so that's going to fix that let's also have classes at the top so i'll have the classes property and then finally we can no longer access styles like that so let me find the styles over here this has to change to classes.paper so we're basically referencing 
this paper element from the styles function over here. And then we have to do the same thing for the left pane as well. So classes.paper. And then finally, instead of using style, we have to change that to class name. So this is going to be a dynamically generated class name as you're gonna see in a second. So once I save the file, let's go back to our application here and let's see what the left pane looks like now. So the left pane has a class now, and this class is being generated in the local environment, and that's why it has an extended form. In production applications, it would typically be something even more contrived than that. So this is the list of class names, and as you can see here, we don't get any inline injected styles at all. But we do have embedded styles though, and if you scroll up to the head element over here in the HTML, you could see a bunch of different styles that are being injected. So for example, most of them are actually coming from a chill UI. So what happens is when we actually use one of the components, let's say a paper component, the paper component is an independent component. It doesn't depend on other components. So you could actually use it in isolation. So when you import that component at the top, right, so we import it from a chill UI, here's the paper component, and we actually use that component inside of our application, what happens is material UI will inject styles for that component inside of the head section. So that's why you see embedded styling over here. If you expand it, you're gonna see the Mui paper class and we basically have different styles for different components. But if you scroll to the very bottom, you can see our component over here and that's our class, the component paper that we created. So we called it paper and of course the name was also customized because all of the names are dynamic. But we can basically see the four styles, the height, padding, margin top, as well as overflow Y property that we define in the styles object or actually function over here so that's basically what happens now the added bonus is that we can actually create media queries we could define more advanced css and it turns out there are a lot of different reasons why this approach is actually more efficient and in the next video we're actually going to take a closer look at the theme so we're actually going to explore the theme object the theme object as you're going to see contains a lot of configuration variables which you are able to customize for your application and in fact you could create different themes that could be updated dynamically on the fly. And that's really just one of the cool features of theming. The last thing I'll mention is I also purchased a new microphone, so I hope you could appreciate a better sound. Let me know how that works. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.